<laughs> All right, who's ready for winter? I know I'm not. Bees are going to need feeding and uh, easy way to do sugar boards. So what I've got here, all right, I've made up a little jig. So this has just got two little open notches here for two reasons. One, for the top of your frame to hang through and it actually is a little bit larger than the hole because this bit's obviously going to touch the, the baseboard there. But if it ever does get stuck, fingers crossed it hasn't happened, the idea is that I can get a screwdriver or something in there to pop it out. Now it's pretty, pretty simple construction, I've just made some little um, grooves here to suit the notches in the frame. If you don't want to go to this much effort and you've only got a couple to make, what you can do is get a board here, put a couple of screws into your frame or nails or something like that and then use uh, flour and water, a nice dense mix, pack it in the edges there, a nice mound there and you can do it that way. It's, it's not going to harm your bees, there's no, you know, nothing contaminating or anything. It takes a little bit more and it can fail on you <laughs> and make a bit of a mess. So uh, I've just, this year, just made this one, which I'm loving. Anyway, there's that done. So to make your uh, candy board, you're going to need some sugar. Um, that's, you can make it just out of sugar, not a problem. I tend to like to add a little bit of uh, brewer's yeast and some soy based protein, so it's, it's from a soy flour extract. Um, you can use a pollen, like a, you know, a bee pollen substitute, something like that if you want to go to the extra cost. But just be careful that you don't put too much. We want to feed the bees to get them through winter, but we don't want to give them so much protein that they're going to think that it's time to you know, keep creating brood and put extra stress on your colony. So there's that one. Now I just put lemongrass couple of drops of uh, lemongrass oil. Now that does a couple of things. One, the bees love the smell and the taste. Makes it a bit more palatable for them, but also a lot of the extra uh, critters that, you know, uh, give our beehives a bit of trouble, they don't like the smell of this stuff. And depending on which country you are, do a bit of research, there's all sorts of uh, essential oils you can add into your bee board, which is gonna make them healthier and it's gonna keep out the critters. So uh, the other thing we're doing this year, I'm yet to see the results, but we'll give it a go and I'll do another clip a bit later, see how it goes, but I'm actually dying it. So the idea, I got this off one of the fellas on the, uh, the forums there. The idea behind that is you can see if your bees have been feeding on your sugar, which obviously, you know, it's, it's not ideal. If you've got a nice strong colony, you don't feed, but when you've got new colonies and you have to feed, the idea is you can tell if you ever go to extract that and there's still your sugar feed in there, you're not going to contaminate your honey because bright red or whatever colour you choose, but red seems to work the easiest, I think. Um, it's going to stand out and you're going to know, well, I'm not going to extract that frame because they've still got sugar water in it. So, brilliant idea. I love it. Um, right, so what we need to do, I've got, uh, I use the WSP Super Frames. So, I've just happens that that takes three kilos of sugar. Now, it does seem like a lot, but it melts down. So you're gonna to have to just play, depending on what size uh, frames you're gonna use, figure out how much you need for that. Um, also, if you're gonna be changing it, so I use three kilos to a cup and a half of water, but uh, so that works out 500 mils per kilo. It's not much water, otherwise you're gonna end up with a runny mess. And you'll see how it boils down later. So, turn this fellow on. As you can see, I've been busy this year already. Uh, so, start off with, put your cup and a half of water in for your three kilos of sugar into your pot. Now, you want to heat that up just so it's about to boil, all right? So we're going to get that a couple of minutes and then I'll show you the next process from there. All right, so just starting to simmer away there. Now, we add our sugar in. Remember, one kilo for 500 mils of water. It's not much. It will look too dry. Don't panic. Don't add more water. <laughs> so if you have a look at that. All right, I'll show you when I mix it up. While it's cool here, even with the hot water, it doesn't look like enough water. It really doesn't. But believe you me, it gets quite runny. Otherwise, you're going to have a big, syrupy, gloopy mess and it won't hold into your frame. All right, so we let that cook for a little while again. Now keep an eye on it, stir it occasionally, 
and I will show you once we get to the right temperature. You can get all fancy and get thermometers and stuff, but I just I use I just do it by eye, and I'll show you what I look for when I'm making it. So I'll be back again in a little bit, and I'll show you when it's ready for the next step. So it's been about five minutes. What you're looking for here? Come over here, have a look in here. You see, I've been stirring it just gently, but you can see around the edges here. See how the bubbles are starting to come up now? And uh, you you notice when you're cooking, when they come up now and they've got clear liquid with them. That's perfect. If you cook it too long and the whole lot's clear, you can end up with hard candy. Bees can't eat that, it's no good. If you get the soft bits here, you'll still get granulated sugar, but then all the soft bits that are just starting to melt, so I'll just turn the heat off quickly, the soft bits that are just starting to melt will bind everything together. Now, after you've done this, we need to, I, like I said, I, uh, this is just what I use, you don't have to, you don't have to use any of this at all. But uh, I go one cup of soy protein, Oh, sorry, one half cup of soy protein. Half cup. And a quarter a cup of brewer's yeast. This has got all sorts of vitamins and goodies for you girls to get through the winter. Quarter a cup of brewer's yeast. And a good old drizzle of the food colour. Now this is the first year I've done this, so I will see what the results are. You don't have to do the food colour. I'll mix them all through. Now just to reiterate, as I said earlier, don't want to put too much protein in there. Um, if you put too much, you're going to stimulate the girls to think there's plenty of resources and your queen will start laying and stress your hive and all sorts of stuff, which you don't want. So. Just a little bit, just to keep them through. If you just give them sugar, that's their um, energy, but they don't have any carbohydrates. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's their carbohydrates. They don't have any proteins, I should say. And the soya proteins give them extra boost to come out the other end of winter nice and healthy because that's what they would usually be getting from pollen. All right, and last but not least, this should be the last thing to go in because the essential oils do evaporate under heat. Just a few drops of your essential oil, lemongrass is what I use. As always, I encourage you to tinker and invent, get creative. Whatever your uh, local community suggests using as far as essential oil treatments go, go for broke. Alright, now nice and smooth. What we want to do, take it over here. I put my frame in. With uh, some greaseproof paper, you can put, I've uh, also been using brown paper bags, newspaper, whatever. One thing I forgot to mention, the frame that you're going to use, make sure it's wired. Two reasons. The wire will reinforce the sugar so it doesn't all collapse in a heap when they start eating away from the edges, because that's what they do. Secondly, end of season, you know what they're going to do? When they've eaten half the frame, they're going to start drawing it with wax. So, you might as well have it ready to go. Alright. Now, ideally, you'd let this cool for a couple of minutes. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and whack it in. Just pour it in nice and slowly. Oops, got a join there, so I work my way backwards from that join. Look at that, eh? Now I've got a little bit extra, but the beauty about the uh, sugar is the viscosity will actually hold up quite well. So I'll give that a minute to cool down while I'm scraping the edges of my pot, and then I can actually put those bits in too. It won't overflow. Alright, rock and roll, we're back. It's all uh, sat and cooled down and gone hard. So here we go. All you've got to do now is just pop them out. Easiest thing you've ever done. Now, this one's come off pretty good actually, I, I won't lie to you, but if all the paper doesn't come off, don't stress, that's why we use paper, not plastic. The bees will just chew it and discard it anyway, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, any of you guys following me on Instagram have seen, it's not a good idea to leave these curing outside. Whoops. <laughs> the girls will have a field day, so just let it sit somewhere inside. 
until it's uh, fairly dry. This one's actually been sitting overnight, so it's uh, probably good to go. But uh, I'll show you how to fit this into your hive in a minute, and um, yeah, I'll see you in a sec. Let's go suit up. Okay, smoky. Got our sugar board ready to fit. So all of these ones here are isolated swarms from this season, so I know all of these are going to need a bit of a top up. So let's go ahead and crack this one. ones that are going to need it are the colonies that don't have the stores. So what you want to do is you want to go through here, you want to find, make sure that they've got an empty frame so they haven't even start to draw that one out. Your side here. Now what I like to do, I like to go through just to help them uh, insulate the brood a bit better. Now they've started to draw some of these but it's still fairly empty, nothing in there. in there nothing in there so I might start there the next one's a full frame drawn out there's nothing in it but it's a full frame so I'm going to use this as a supply but it's also a bit of a divider so I put it in here to keep all the brood and the warmth on this side here while it's in there you might as well use the thermal mass to your advantage so there you go stick it back in you remove the frame that's empty and Bob's your uncle for the larger ones, you'll usually find that it's the outside frames that got nothing on them. They do like to store their supplies further to the outside of the brood uh, cluster. But uh, obviously if the brood cluster is smaller, you need to put that closer. So anyway, it's as simple as that. There you go, these girls are good for winter. And we'll see you at the other end, my girls. Alright, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and watch some of my other videos, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one. So have a look at this. This is one I put in a couple of days ago already. They're drawing out that sugar ball with the red in it. Have a look. You can see the slight red tinge to the, the honey, which is cool. Look at that red tinge there. So you know that the bottom one's honey and the top one's the sugar syrup. But look at this. Look at them in the sunlight, they got red bellies. You can see these girls have been feeding on our uh, artificial board, so it's working a treat. Thanks for that idea, mate. What a ripper.